The first reading is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that me he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. Historically, today is Gaudet Sunday. Gaudet means rejoice in Latin. So it's become the Sunday of joy. So we see joy as our newest banner over there. Uh, We have our theme of joy, and we light our pink candle, the color of, which is the color of joy. Now, initially, this served an important purpose. Because Advent began in church history. Here's a brief church history lesson. Uh, It began as another Lent So it's longer than we practice it today. It was 40 days, 40 days of penance and self-reflection for people who were preparing to be baptized on Epiphany. And the original color of Advent then was purple. So we see some carryovers of that still. Um, And interestingly, the church found that the Lenten themes of penance and preparation and sacrifice paired with the days getting longer and colder that just sort of naturally comes at this time of year um, was a bit of a downer. So the Sunday of joy was born to serve as a little spiritual pick-me-up in the middle of this season that was a Lenten season when it began. Fast forward to one of the liturgical renewals. Advent got shortened to the four weeks we practice today, and the focus shift from a Lenten penance to preparation for the coming of the Messiah. And then with that, the color of Advent changed to blue, the color of hope. But the Sunday of joy remains. I found this all really fascinating. 
because we've come a long way, I think, as a society from the days of St. Martin's Lent, as it was called. And you don't find a lot of downers at this time of year. Here's a case in point from a day in the life of our house. If I had to guess, I would say a conservative estimate would be that we heard Feliz Navidad ten times in our household yesterday. Because Simon is really into it. And I get it. It's catchy. It's really repetitive. It is the same thing over and over again. <laughs> Perfect for a three-year-old. And so he just kept asking for us to play it. And I tried to use this to my advantage at one particularly chaotic moment in hopes that playing it would, would release some of the tension that was brewing with their argumentative three-year-old. But it kind of backfired, because instead it really only redirected the, sort of the energy. <laughs> because shortly after I started playing, then came the demands for us to sing. And as soon as we stopped singing, Alan and I, even for a moment, or, or even dropped our volume a little bit, Simon would shout, keep singing! Needless to say, it did not make things feel any less chaotic at that moment. And I feel like the Christmas season is sometimes like this. Right? Sing! Be cheerful! This is a happy time! Demanding positive feelings, at least pretending like everyone is having a good time. I feel like the secular world around us has become uh, so joy-focused this time of year that having a designated joy Sunday that sticks out from the others in some ways can serve another important purpose today. So while it's no longer a dose of joy used to pull us out of a slump and get us through our Lenten journey on the way to the light of Epiphany, I think it's important now as a time to name the reality that there is joy. And here it is. We're holding it for you regardless of the state in which your own joy may be at the moment. So the Sunday of joy is not here to shout at you, to sing and be cheerful. So maybe at one point it served that purpose. Today it's here to remind you that it's okay if you're not. It's okay if you're not feeling particularly cheery or joyous. It's okay if you don't feel like singing or you feel like you have little over which to rejoice. The church, we are here. Your family of God is here to hold joy for you when you cannot. And God comes to you just as you are. We hear a poem from the book of Isaiah today, and it's such a rich poem. I really, I, I really just want to commend it to you to read again today and throughout your week write down the verses that call to you because there's really so much in there. So please spend some time with it. See what God is saying to you through this poem, through this chapter, Isaiah 55. This poem comes at the end of what's known as the Book of Comfort in Isaiah. It's written as the exile ends. We've talked about the exile for the last several weeks. The people have been, and have been in exile for 70 years. The people are weary. They've been through a lot. There's not a lot of clarity on what the future will look like. They are tired. They're not feeling a lot of joy at the moment. And into that weariness, God calls. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. This pre-Christmas time is <laughs> full of people asking, what do you want for Christmas? And that's usually directed at kids, referencing what, what present you want to find under the Christmas tree. But Advent asks us a similar question. What do you long for? For what does your heart yearn? Longing for things to be different in some way longing for a life filled with more meaning or purpose. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? God calls to a people who are longing, longing for physical food and water, and people longing for something more, some more fulfillment in life. 
God offers an invitation to come and be filled both physically and spiritually by God who is abundantly merciful, whose promises are everlasting, and whose word does not fail. That is the source of our joy. God's faithfulness, God coming to us no matter where we are, no matter what we've done, and offering abundant mercy, that is why we can rejoice, even if we carry grief with us as we go. The holidays are hard. There is such a deep well of memories because of all the sights, sounds, smells, and tastes that are the same from year to year, and they act to cement those memories and create those layers so our bodies remember. Our bodies know. We remember that grief in some way, even if we've trained our brains not to think about it. And the holidays stir all sorts of that up in us, all sorts of nostalgia, which holds both comfort and grief. Holidays are complicated. And so, of course, we long for all sorts of things. We long for our loved ones who have died. The holidays are always hard when you live with that grief. Or we long for a relationship that's not coming back or a place you can no longer go back to. Or like the Israelites returning from exile, a place you go back to that just isn't the same and never will be again. We long for reconciliation. We long for a hope-filled future. We long for God's promise of new life. We long for so much. And today we hear from God, My word does not return to me empty. It shall accomplish that which I purpose. God's word does what it sets out to do. God is near. God's word comes in the flesh. God's word heals. God's word feeds. God's word forgives. God's word dies and lives again. God promises new life, and God keeps God's promises. God's word does not return empty. Of course, this does not magically take away the grief and despair that we may be experiencing But God brings alongside of that joy and peace. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. Poet Maggie Smith writes, You are not betraying your grief by feeling joy. And I think that works the other way, too, in this holiday season. You are not betraying your joy by feeling your grief. There is room for both in Advent. There are plenty of both in God's story, which holds all of our stories, and we know there are plenty of both in all of our stories. So if there is grief in your life right now, know that these words are for you. You shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. This poem, spoken to a people in grief, promising them joy, Is God calling the people of Israel home? The exile is over. It's time to come home. God is not finished with you yet. It doesn't matter what you've done or whether you think you deserve it or not or what you carry with you. God's promise is everlasting. God will use you in ways that you don't even know. God will surprise you with things unexpected. Instead of the thorn, the cypress, Instead of the briar, the myrtle. Unexpected things is how God works. Salvation in a manger. Death, life from death. The divine enfleshed. The Israelites thought the covenant was over. And God comes and renews it. God reminds them it is everlasting. Every time we think the story is over, God shows up and reminds us It's just getting started. God is on the move. God is coming near. This weary world rejoices. Thanks be to God. 